Since the NHL changed the playoff format, we have never seen anything like this. With just one game remaining, there are still four teams battling it out for the final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. And in NHL history, I don't recall a playoff race this insane, especially since two of the teams involved have two of the legends of the game. Welcome to Hattrick HQ, I'm Mark Griffith. If you're new around here and you love hockey, make sure you subscribe because less than 20% of the people watching are subscribed. So if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors revolving around the NHL, then make sure you join that Hattrick HQ family. But like I said, the main thing of this video is that we have an absolutely bonkers playoff race on our hands here. The likes that we've never seen before, especially in my lifetime. I can't recall a time like this at all, but let's get into this insane playoff race. As I alluded to, the Eastern Conference, you know, there's about one game left to go for most teams in the uh, NHL right now and the ones involved in this playoff race. And there are four teams still in it. I can remember times where there were two, maybe three teams all battling for a spot going into that last day. But for four of them going for just one spot to face the President's Trophy winners is totally bananas let's let's be real about it that's what it is and we've never seen anything like it so let's take a look at the standings here it is Washington Detroit Pittsburgh and Philly going for that last wild card spot in the east and just two points separate all four clubs so the Capitals are in the best position right now um, Detroit tied on points with them Pittsburgh just a point behind those two and then Philly can still squeak in somehow with one game to go but there are a lot of tiebreakers to bring into consideration here first is the regulation wins and as of right now Pittsburgh actually has the most for that so if it comes down to that they are in a good position next is the regulation and OT wins the row wins um, and Detroit actually are definitely the highest there as they have 11, 11 wins in overtime this year. Talk about clutch. They got one last night once again against Montreal. Then you go to total games one. Um, Detroit, again, they're leading that as of right now, but it is a very close race. Then you get head-to-head -head points, goal differential, and goal scored. And those last three probably won't come into consideration, but they might just have to if Philly wants a chance at making the playoffs this season so it is an insane race but let's take a look at the clinching scenarios for each of those clubs involved and we will start with the team that has the best chance to make the playoffs here it's the team in the second wild card spot right now they control their own destiny win and they're in it is the washington capitals the capitals control their own destiny a win over the flyers would give them 91 points and they hold the regulation wins tiebreaker over the Red Wings, the only other club of these four that can get to 91. So it's simple for the Caps. Win and you're in. Bada bing, bada boom. Ovechkin is back in the playoffs. Next, Detroit's path includes a win over the Montreal Canadiens and a loss of some variety for the Capitals, whether it's in regulation or out of regulation. The Wings lose the RW, Regulation Wings, tiebreaker to any of the remaining four teams. Like I said, they have tons of overtime wins, but that means they don't have a load in regulation so they really just need to get the points here and able to clinch next the penguins the max total for the penguins is 90 but if they finish tied with the caps and wings at that total or at the total of 89 if they lose in out of regulation in their last game the other two lose in regulation they are in thanks to the regulation wins tiebreaker accordingly they are fans of the habs and the flyers yikes your biggest rival on tuesday night which is tonight game number 82 for Pittsburgh is Wednesday against the Islanders who have clinched the number three spot in the Metro division. Now, obviously that third spot in the Metro was a big player leading up to pretty much today, but the Islanders did clinch that last night. They are in for sure, but it's insane that two of these teams here, so Washington and Pittsburgh have two of the biggest legends of the game, really, not just of this generation. I mean, I'm partial to say the best of this generation is Dion Phaneuf, but that's obvious, isn't it? Crosby, Ovechkin have another chance to make the playoffs here. Crosby has been absolutely carrying the Penguins here. And it would be an amazing story if he was able to get his club into the postseason once again. And then on the other side with Ovechkin again. Slow start to the season. Started picking up a lot of goals. He's creeping up on the great one Wayne Gretzky in that goals tally. Um, but so is Austin Matthews really. 69 this season. Could end up with even more. I think that record might be broken if Matthews can have a long career. But anyway, let's get into the last team here that can clinch. And it is the Flyers. The Flyers can get in, but it is complicated. 
Philly must beat Washington in regulation, and the Wings and Penguins must lose their games in regulation as well. This gives the Flyers, Caps, and Wings all 89 points and the Penguins 88. The Wings are out due to the regulation win tiebreaker, and the Caps and Flyers go to a fifth tiebreaker. Regulation wins, they're tied 31-31. Regulation wins plus OT wins, the row wins, they're tied 35-35. Total wins, they'd be tied at 39-39. The head-to-head -head points, this one has a weird stipulation, but the head-to-head -head points, they did not play an even number of games with one or more of the other tied clubs. The first game played in the city that has the extra game shall not be included, so they'd be tied at 2-2. I know that's super complicated. Feel free to read over that again, but essentially, they each went at home twice sort of thing. It's kind of like soccer if you follow the Champions League or anything. And then it would come down to the greater goal differential where Philly is ahead at a minus 25. Imagine getting into the playoffs because you have a minus 25 goal differential. Well, it's insane that Washington can make it in at their minus 38. Um, and that would be one of the lowest goal differential totals we've seen for a playoff team ever. That is just insane. Imagine that's the tiebreaker because they scored 25 less goals than their opponents this year. Got all that. Tuesday night should be another wild one with the Atlantic Division title on the line as well. And the Vancouver Canucks looking to close things out in the Pacific. So the games that really matter tonight are these two. Detroit, they're in Montreal. Uh, they just beat them yesterday in overtime. And it shouldn't be too tough of a game for them tonight, you wouldn't think. But it's very important. And then the huge one as well. Two of the teams involved, Washington and Philly. It says 5 p.m. there on the side. I apologize. I'm in mountain time. So if you're Eastern time zone, it's 7 p.m. Um, don't be watching the game super early or late. That is just in mountain time zone. But that is absolutely huge. Philly needs that regulation win. They need the Habs to win. It is just absolutely insane. So let's quickly, quickly go over these implications once again. Uh, let me find the right button here. So here are the implications. Washington, win and you're in. Um, if they do get an OT loss, they can still get in if Detroit loses to Montreal. Um, Detroit, pretty much they clinch if... Washington lose to Philly in any fashion and they win. Um, we talked about all the tiebreakers already. Pittsburgh, they clinch if Washington lose to Philly in any fashion and Detroit lose to Montreal in any fashion. So essentially they win and the other two lose anyway. They're good. And then Philly, we just went over it. They have to win in regulation, um, which would mean Washington loses in regulation. And then they need both Detroit and Pittsburgh to also lose in regulation so it's gonna to be tough for them to squeak in but either way that is just an insane insane playoff race but now let's take a look at what actually is set what do we know for sure and it's crazy that there really isn't much set going into the last game of the season we know almost all the teams that will be in 15 of the 16 spots are already taken the west has been done for a while now boring boring west the east is a lot more fun but what we do know for positioning is pretty scarce right now. But what we do know is that the Rangers have won the President's Trophy. So they will be facing the team that squeaks in in the Eastern Conference. Congratulations to the Rangers on another amazing season. They've kind of proven that all you really need to be a perennial contender is a star goalie. Think of all those years they went far in the playoffs with Henrik Lundqvist. Now they've got... Um, Igor Shesterkin playing absolutely amazing. And Jonathan Quick has been one of, if not the best backup goalie in the NHL this season. So goaltending can get them far. And with all that star power they have up front, they are looking dangerous. Which means the only other confirmed matchup we know of is that the Hurricanes will be playing the New York Islanders. So the New York Islanders clinched yesterday. Um, kind of crazy that they were the team that ended up coming third in this division. A lot of people going into this season thought it would be a three-horse race in the Metro between the Rangers, the Devils, and the Hurricanes. The Devils, as we know, have really, really slipped up this season. They need to acquire a goaltender if they want to get far. But either way, congratulations to both Carolina and the Islanders as well on making it to the playoffs. So let's take a little look at some history between those two clubs when it comes to the postseason. Um, they've played just a few times before, but they've played quite a bit recently in the playoffs. So this is the third playoff meeting between the Islanders and Hurricanes. Carolina has won each of the previous two meetings. They swept the Isles in 2019 and they won 4-2 just last season. But this year, the Isles and Canes played four times in the regular season and the Isles actually went 2-1-1. One, and one. So they each won two games, but... The Isles got that out-of-regulation loss to have the advantage there. 
So either way, these teams are very familiar with each other, especially in a playoff scenario. It's kind of been dubbed as a boring series because that's what it has been in the past. We've seen low scoring. Um, the Isles are a very defensive team. They ha are another team with a great goalie in Sorokin and Varlamov is also one of the best backups in the NHL this year. And then the Hurricanes, they have gotten some pretty good goaltending recently, but they, as we know, they just score at will. They are a very, very dangerous looking team. I am inclined to say that I think the Hurricanes will win this series and it will be more fun than some of the series in the past. Um, I always love, you know, overtime games in the playoffs and I love game seven. So I hope it reaches that. But that being said, I really think the Hurricanes, if Freddie Anderson can stand on his head, well, he might not even need to, but if he's playing lights out, I think the Hurricanes wrap this one up in five or six games. But either way, that is the first confirmed matchup and it should be a very fun one. Just like how this Eastern Conference playoff race is the most fun race I can remember in so long. It is a blast to see how the next couple of days will pan out. It's crazy to think that in less than 48 hours, we will know who will be in that final playoff spot. And then the playoffs start pretty much right away this week. And it's so much fun. We will keep you updated with everything involving the playoff race and the playoffs here on Hattrick HQ. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you like what you saw here today and have a wonderful rest of your day.